We're back. Another week. So welcome, everybody. Uh, Rob here with John and our special guest, uh, Fuzzy. And we'll get into uh, our discussion in a second. I just want to remind everybody that these are being recorded. We throw them on the YouTube channel. Last week, we had Randy Sarton again. That was our second time with Randy. He uh -huh. spoke on... Uh, he spoke on architectural photography last week and the year before, and it's really good stuff. Not to be confused with real estate photography. There is a difference. No. Nope. Uh, so we got um, we got uh, all the way from Wisconsin. Uh, I'm really excited. We got Fuzzy on. I'll, I'll explain to you why in a minute, Fuzzy. I hope I hope I hope I don't embarrass you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing your work back in the '90s and thinking to myself, "Wow!" And uh, I've always felt. I don't know if you saw the email I sent out the other day, but I kind of, did you, did you by chance happen to see it at all? I, I don't think I did. No. Okay. So here's what I said, because I was promoting this event to tell everyone, oh, you're coming on board. I said, um, I said, if you had to hang me by my ankles in a high rise building over a street below and force the answer out of me and say, who's your favorite photographer? And I had to answer, I would say it's fuzzy. And the reason is, <laughs> is the work obviously so and we're talking portraiture so um the uh the look the i'm gonna say technical creative visual and posing and expression and the way you create your images has been consistent over the decades and uh, i've always kind of admired that and uh, i know a couple of years ago we did a four five hour series um, an advanced training series when we went into when we went into uh, detail on how you create your images, but uh, that's uh, so I'm a bit of a fanboy. Let's put it that way, and I appreciate what you do and what you create. And um, before we get into what you've been up to these days and what your plans are and uh, all of the other questions that we might throw your way, we'll we'll we'll, we'll keep it easy and light. We're going to have a fun, easygoing discussion. But I want you to. If you can tell us uh, in as few words as possible and w what kind of got you into photography, and we'll go from there. How does that uh, sound? Sure, sure. Uh, in 75, uh, 1975, that would be at 1975, um, <laughs> I, uh, I uh, was asked to photograph a wedding for a friend of mine because I had uh, – been taking snapshots and forcing my friends to sit in their living room and look at my slides. And at the end of the slideshow, they'd go, oh, well, I guess it's time to go. And uh, anyway, um, so <laughs> she knew I liked to take pictures. And uh, so uh, we did her wedding and she enjoyed them. She cried afterward. Uh, tears of joy, I, I might add. But um, but that I thought, well, that's pretty cool. You know, so uh, I might want to do this. Uh, I was in, in electronics at the time. And okay. uh, that, which is a really technical career, and mm -hmm. uh, so it's more artistic, and so that kind of appealed to that side of my brain. And so, uh, so I started doing that. I, I did one wedding the next year, one or two uh, friends of hers, and uh, uh, and then it didn't really interest me all that much at that point yet. But a friend of mine was also became a wedding photographer, and uh, and I thought, oh, I, I can do better than he can. And then it became a friendly competition, and then the bug really bit. Uh, so uh, so after that, then it just took off. He dropped off after a year, which it happens to m most photographers, um, but then it uh, took off for me. And then, mm -hmm. so that we were weddings for quite a while, and then in 82, or in the, yeah, in the early 80s, I began doing portraits, and then 86 or 96, I dropped weddings altogether. Okay, 96. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right. you were doing photography full-time right through the 80s up until now, obviously. Right, right. Um, okay. Why did you yeah. quit weddings? I'm curious. I mean, God, you're so lucrative. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I loved weddings for 19 out of the 20 years that I did them. And I always heard photographers who complained about doing weddings and and I thought, mm -hmm. well, if you don't like doing it, get out of it, because there are plenty of us who do love weddings. So so uh, yeah. sure enough, when it got to that point where I just didn't love them anymore, I thought, I better let it go. And and I'm, it was easy to let it go. Um, yeah. Portrait, not so much. And uh, we may be getting into this, but I'm trying to retire now, mm -hmm. and I'm finding it hard to do. Um, as I say, weddings, mm -hmm. that was easier to let go, but not portraits so much. 
So I'm okay. trying to find my exit. Mm -hmm. Well, how important is it to you that you, it doesn't seem to me that, because if you did it, you just rip the bandaid off and do it. But it seems to me you probably still have a certain amount of passion and love of the craft and creating. Right, right. I've been doing this, I think I have figured out for 47 years. So, uh, so it's, um, so some things I just don't, I don't interest me anymore. Uh, I've mm -hmm. been known mostly for my high school seniors and I, and I've always loved doing them. Uh, mm -hmm. but it's to the point where I've done it before, been there, done that kind of thing. And so yeah. unless they can offer me something different or unusual or special, okay. um, I just don't want to do that anymore. So right now I'm kind of directing a little bit toward light painting, which we can talk about yeah. at some point. But, uh, that yeah. and headshots, as as uncreative as they are, I enjoy mm -hmm. doing them because they're easy yeah. done in the studio. It's uh, in and out and a, and a couple of bucks, you know. So it's yeah. I, I I have fun doing that. But I've always yeah, been yeah. A, an on location photographer, so that too is unusual for me to want to be doing this in the studio. Yeah, that's cool. So you're doing light painting a la John Hartman. Exactly. Yeah. And he's the guy to learn from. He gives seminars yeah. quite often, at, at least once or twice around his studio and then at different places in the country and also at different conventions and seminars. Yeah. I've interviewed him twice already. I did one on strictly okay. light painting and a general one. Okay. Uh, amazing stuff. How far down the road is he from you? Because I know you're both from Wisconsin, right? About two two hours. Okay. So yeah, uh, yeah. Two hours north of me, so. Nice, yeah. nice. All right. So light painting, yeah. Um, headshots, yeah. We had a headshot photographer on two weeks ago, right, Johnny? We had Raphael mm -hmm. Wiggle. Here's Raphael. something you'll here's here's something you'll never hear. John Butler, wedding photographer. <laughs> Talking <laughs> about anymore. weddings. <laughs> I've been bugging John for years. That guy right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's also done weddings. Yeah. I still do weddings. I love doing weddings. I find them grueling at times. I do find sometimes uh, I have a struggle um, reconciling. <laughs> There's a little bit of BS with weddings. There's that pageantry. It's like, oh, come on. Mm -hmm. I have yeah. a hard time with that. But, I'm, you know, I was like, okay, whatever. It's visually stunning. Let's just go with it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what was it for you, Fuzzy, that sort of made you throw in the towel for weddings? Um. We had one bad experience with what was going to be the best wedding I've ever done. It was at a really <laughs> high-end uh, facility. Uh, the bride and groom were were well-to-do attorneys and doctors and the whole spiel. And and uh, right. and I thought, man, this is it. Finally, I've worked all these years to do the. You know, I've gotten that chance instead of working in VFW halls and bowling alleys. Finally, I mm -hmm. can do this. It was, I don't want to go into details, but it was just horrible. Mm -hmm. My wife yeah. was crying at the end of it. And she said, Fuzzy, get me out of here. And I thought, uh -huh. you know, if this is where it ends up to be, we're done. So, uh, yeah. you know, right. you shouldn't let one event spoil it for you. But it was accumulation of things. And it, yeah. I don't know how you can do it at your age, at your advanced age. Um, <laughs> it You have to be young, at least at heart, to do this. It's uh, yeah. uh, It takes a lot of energy. And I just wasn't feeling that energy anymore. Yeah. Part of no, it too I, was that was the film days. And and a, yeah. but there were a lot of limitations. And I had the wrong lens at the wrong time. And and all mm -hmm. of those things. Nowadays with digital, it, it's actually easier. Um, mm -hmm. They shoot 10 times as many photographs. But um, but it, so it would be easier to do now. But anyway, that's it. those days are gone for me. They're yeah. gone. So, yeah. No, my biggest struggle is the yeah, I'm older than the parents now. I'm 64, and <laughs> month, uh, you know, and I always say the brides, if they could get a 32 year old guy who's kind of cute looking and 20 percent as talented as me, they'd go with him. It's, that's matters mm -hmm. more to them. It's just the reality. Yeah. It's the fact of life. And uh, yeah. but uh, I keep doing them. I got lots of energy, and uh, that's my. I just lost the passion for it after 15, 16 years. I just. I dreaded having to go to do another wedding and it's not fair mm. to the bride and groom if you're going to do them and you're not a hundred percent into it. Right. So, you know, you had... uh, spending off of that, uh, that's kind of how it is with senior photography these days. I'm almost 70 years old and mm -hmm. uh, what 17 year old wants a 70 year old guy to photograph them, you know, instead mm -hmm. of a, a young thirties ish hip young woman who knows their music and their language and mm -hmm can communicate on, on, on that level. So I yeah. totally understand that. And so the senior market has really dropped off a lot for me. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, that's a good perspective. I mean, we're kind of tying in the wedding experience with the senior experience. However, uh, um, the level of work, I look at what you do and I think, well, what high school senior wouldn't want that quality? And if in the sales process and or communications process and journey that you could potentially bring them on, uh, I'm not trying to talk you into going full time into seniors again here. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to make a sort of a, uh, a point uh, philosophically um, as far as the way I perceive generally the general quality versus what you're bringing to the game at least the parents would be able to say, yeah, this guy's good. I mean, and he's been around the community for a long time, but there is a difference. Do they see the difference or are they blind to that? Is that part of the uh, reality? Yeah, it's a good question. Care? Some do, some don't care. Uh, mm -hmm. The ones who uh, uh, have a friend do it or, or just uh, uh, have a photographer who just points a camera at them, um, that doesn't matter to them. But there certainly are a good number of people who do care, uh, mostly, as you said, the parents, because they've been through it and they can appreciate quality at their at their stage in life. Uh, mm -hmm. But for the kids, the seniors, uh, you know, they photograph themselves all day long every day. And uh, so they, they're have, being photographed by a professional is not the big event it used to be. It used to no. be that senior would come in and say, oh, man, I've been looking forward to this since eighth grade. You know, wow. and that doesn't really happen anymore. Again, there are right. some, and what it takes is marketing to find those people. Whereas yeah. what I was just relying on was word of mouth in this area. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that worked for a while, but it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. So I'm going to guess that overall in the 40 plus years you've been shooting professionally, has your wife been working with you full time or has she had another career slash job or... Uh, she mostly worked with me. She did. Uh, she helped with the makeup. She did the uh, uh, book work. Uh, we used to say, mm -hmm. uh, "Fuzzy pushes the button; she does the rest," uh, which yeah. used to be an old Kodak slogan. But anyway, yeah. so yeah, she did the, the consultations, the sales, the the book work, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. I did the photo session. Uh, so well, you but want about you know maybe ten years ago, she she said, "I don't want to do this anymore." So uh, okay. so she gradually backed out and. Okay. Uh, uh, and so then it was just, just all on me. Well, you want to remain mysterious, the mysterious artist who shows up when the, it's time to push the button. Yeah. Um, I've always felt it was one of the most valuable setups. And my, my wife and I have been working together uh, going on 27 years now as running the studio. She's an accountant by trade, so we're complete opposites. And so we bring a real dynamic duo team to the uh, industry and mm -hmm. it sounds to me like you and her were very similar yeah. in that respect but yeah I always thought Shirley is super uh perfect <laughs> yeah that's how right. I stayed married but anyway um we she's <laughs> she's always accurate uh and it doesn't make mistakes I make mm -hmm. mistakes all the time which okay, is a well, source of friction but at least it uh she yeah. covered up for me a lot of times all right. Well, that leads me to a good question and uh, an obvious question to me. And uh, but 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 for first, I got to finish off this topic by by saying or making a statement or potentially asking you the question. Uh, no regrets. It sounds to me like you've had a damn good life running your business, and y y you know it's been a pretty good run. I mean, in the end, you look back, you go, mm -hmm. "Yeah, no regrets. Life is good." You planned well, you've lived well, and uh, there you go. Is that fair? That was a question, or are you? More or less. I mean, okay, if you want. sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, my my goal was always to be in demand. And mm -hmm. um, you know, it's always been like almost there, almost there. It's uh, when I start a, a, a new product line, it, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm almost there, almost there. So th there's always there was always a goal to still reach. Um, and I really can't complain about the seniors uh, because I did enough of them and I did them in, in a good quality uh, that I was happy with that. Mm -hmm. But um, there were some things that I wish I could have accomplished. Uh, you know, there are some speaking events uh, that I, I've never did a, done a platform program for a PPA or or yeah. even sync or those kind of things. So I would like to have done that, but uh, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So that's no, just I, a feather in my cap I'll never have. But 
and that's okay. I accept it. Well, I find there's a lot of irony in that because uh, I've been to a million and one um, webinars and live events, conventions, and what have you. You get, I don't want to say jaded, but you get sort of like you've seen so much of it after a while that it's hard to find stuff that is of value. This is my own opinion, right? So having said that, knowing what you bring to the game, it would seem to me that that would be stuff that would be of, of, uh, of value. I'll give you an example, and then I'll ask you a question, probably lead into where you're going now, because I, I think you're still planning on teaching and uh, sort of mm -hmm. becoming the uh, the guru, so to speak. And hopefully that that's relevant to photographers, especially the newcomers, younger, the younger generation, yeah. they can value what it is that you bring to the game. Might be a bit of a hard sell. I hope not. I hope not. But uh, so, but I remember watching, the, I think it was a video you had shot and you posted somewhere and I saw it and it was, uh, you were doing a picture in a, a senior's bedroom. It was in the second story and there was light coming in from the blue sky and there was an issue with color balance. And you went outside, <laughs> you did something with the light that was bouncing off from the sun into the window. Yeah. You yeah. shifted the white balance. <laughs> and I'm like, who the hell thinks of that? And, and, and that is in order to achieve, in the end, um, damn near perfection when it comes to, on the technical side of things, white balance. Now, white balance is something you've seemed to really mastered, as well as um, total uh, lighting control, both through subtractive lighting and uh, regular lighting with uh, reflectors and your main light. Uh, balancing everything. And when I say subtractive lighting, John, you'll find some pictures with Fuzzy's setup. He's always got a black uh, covering over top of uh, whomever he's shooting, which is a wonderful, wonderful effect. And I would have never thought of that until I, uh, I saw your course and I'm like, oh God, there you go. There you go. So um, I forgot where I was going well, with all I that. Should, I should explain. I, I didn't come up with that idea. Uh, uh, okay. I think Leon Kenimer was the first one to do it. I never met or saw him at a seminar, but I did read a book called Four Photographers. It was mm -hmm. Al Gilbert, uh, Gary Bernstein, um, Monty, and uh, and Leon. And uh, okay. and his section dealt with subtractive lighting. And I thought, holy mm -hmm. cow, you can get better results by taking light away. And yeah. so that's really where that started. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. It's cool that you say Al Gilbert, and uh, he's one of my favorites. Oh, uh, fellow Canadian, I guess. Yeah, well, he's from Toronto, just down the road, and I had him. I had him come up in our branch, and he spoke in two thousand, and uh, blew me away. He just blew me away. And um, oh. now that I think of it, he was doing the subtractive lighting. He, he did a picture of our mayor. He did one of the most amazing photos I've ever seen. Uh, and I'm sort of connecting the dots now that you mentioned that. And but you seem to use it. Uh, consistently uh, and with more intention, you know. Um, so, but my point is this, you talked about your wife, she's perfect, you're not so much, but you know, you sound to me from what I know of you that you are very controlled and you really control the technical side of things. You, you also create really nice poses, nice expressions. So you're able to balance the two at a very, very high level and create these stunning results. So uh, and your background, going back to what you went into in your earlier years before you got into photography, you were studying electronics, which is very technical. Did, did that play right. a role? Did that play right. a role? Or, or were you predisposed to be sort of that engineering type brain or that mindset that you seem to have, which is a, a hybrid, really? I think a, a clue to that is when I was a kid, I used to like to draw. I was terrible at it, but I liked it. Uh, mm -hmm. But then I also liked to build things. And uh, um, so there was that that uh, technical side and then the artistic side. And uh, they, you know, they kind of come together in photography because you have to, you, you don't have to, but you should be good at both. And I think mm -hmm. Dean Collins is really a, a, a huge inspiration for the technical aspect. Because yeah. when I first went to his seminar, I thought, well, I know all, all there is to lighting. You have a main and a fill, and what else do you need to know? Well, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, you know, what little we did know. So so that really <laughs> helped me 
to understand this, this that there's science behind the lighting. And then yeah. as to the artistic, then we had the the David Peters type of uh, look that I just loved. And so that was just kind mm -hmm. of a, a blend of those two. So okay. so with the technical, the lighting that I do, the as you say, the white balance and and I, I should explain, it's not just white balance, but it's uh, it's lighting of the same color than mm -hmm. the existing sky, for example. So I, I mm -hmm. blue gel my light a lot. I did a session yesterday where I had the blue gel on the whole time because it was a blue sky. So the blue sky was part of the exposure. So so does the flash. So that mm -hmm. then you just color correct it globally in, in the, right. the software you're on. But um, where mm -hmm. was it going with that? But anyway, so you've got the technical and the and the yeah. artistic together. Yeah, yeah, um, that's interesting. Absolutely interesting. So what I'm hearing from you is you learned a lot of these ideas and you were open to learning uh, from guys like Gilbert and Dean Collins and uh, yeah. so in the eighties, probably... especially eighties and nineties. But you know, and I think yeah. that's one thing that um, I think photographers these days are missing out on by not going to conventions and. Mm -hmm. uh, seminar because uh, they're missing all those in inspirations. We've got YouTube. I totally get it. You know, there's a lot you can learn on YouTube. Uh, so, so that's great. They're learning from that. But there's also something to be said um, by meeting someone live and seeing them and talking with them in mm -hmm. person. Yeah, seems to be a much higher level of uh, commitment too. So you, 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 mm -hmm. you know, our uh, focus seems to go up higher when you're there in person. That's like a bigger commitment. So. Sure. Interesting. Uh, fascinating. So um, you're now, I, I think you mentioned it in our communication prior to getting you on this event, our live stream here was that you were uh, semi-retired semi and uh, uh, you're still doing some work. Obviously, you're just being selective, but you also want to put, I think you said you're putting together some more programs or are you planning on getting out there, hitting the road or doing some sort of teaching? Yeah, I do. I have uh, quite a few programs that I can speak on. And one of my favorites lately, I've, I've been, there's one that I've been giving basically since the mid 90s. It's just mm -hmm. evolved and added to since then. And that's right. basically lighting and primarily aimed at high school seniors, although lighting can yeah. work with anyone. Um, so yeah. I've been giving that one a long time. Uh, but there's one I call uh, Mediocre to Marvelous. And uh, what that's all about is I live just in an ordinary, average midwestern town yep. and in the beginning i thought i'll never amount to anything because there's nothing special around here well you know that was really silly because it's not you know the your location it's it's what you do with it so uh mm -hmm. so that that program centers on how you can just take very ordinary average homes which is what i normally mostly deal with and and yeah. make something exceptional so that's uh, that's what i pride myself most in in that taking something that's just your run of the mill and, and making something wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's, um, there's a lot of examples of how you do that. And, uh, uh, the locations that <laughs> there's one that stands out in my mind. I think it was a, a pool that was a little, a little small child's <laughs> pool. It was blue and it was float, sitting up against the side of a garage and you used it as a backdrop. Do you remember that one? Was oh blue. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It looked like a studio backdrop. <laughs> yeah. There was another one I did recently, oh, a couple of years ago of a high school senior. She had this blue tarp that was kind of crumpled off, off to the side. So I thought, well, you know, let's see if we can make a background out of it. So I laid it mm -hmm. out on the ground and um, and then I lit it with two accents behind behind her. And those mm -hmm. accents reflected off of the of the blue tarp. And it looks just like a pool. It looks just like water. And oh, so, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll have to show it to you when we get a chance, but yeah, it's fun. Uh, that's pretty cool. So um, you seem to have an eye for spotting um, sort of locations and possibilities. And I'm sure to some degree or other, you said that you've never had a studio, right? You've always shot on location. That's become your sort of. Uh, oh, no, I've, I've always had a studio. It's just a matter mm -hmm. of I prefer to work on location. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, that started and, and that, back in, yeah. That started back in the. 70s or 80s when I saw a lot of studio portraits that bored the heck out of me and I thought okay that's not real life you know I want to capture real life so I, I thought well, the only okay. way to do that is on location and that's not necessarily true of course that that that's the only way you can capture it but that was in my head at that time so that yeah. really formed the the the, the emphasis of, uh, of heading out and just working with the existing uh, surroundings 
Yeah, that's interesting. And um, you were ahead of your time because I, I don't know of anyone. I certainly didn't think that way because to me, it was I had the exact opposite. And the studio was the only way to go. And uh, okay. it being not real life seemed to be the only way to go. The idea of shooting in real life on real locations just wasn't even something that was on my horizon and uh until much much later i mean shooting weddings especially once we went digital that ideology became something that i practiced in my uh whatever photo shoots i was doing you just see things differently you spot things differently so uh like i said you're ahead of your time back in the 70s you were able to develop this uh style of shooting based on shooting on location your preferred style of shooting looking for ways to create different backdrops using what you got and that's that to me, I find that to be uh, a skill that one gets better at if you're willing to do that. And I find mm -hmm. it to be a whole lot of fun, you know. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you just get out there and you look for stuff, and it's amazing what you can pull out once you uh, start to right. develop those muscles. So, right. Uh, and it was formed out of necessity. If I had grown up in an area with, uh, beautiful architectural yeah. churches and buildings and uh, parks just you know it would have been different i would have relied on that and then i wouldn't have grown and or yeah. developed that ability to to see something where other people didn't see it that's a good point that's a really good point and uh i've always at one level saw a lot of these pictures that were taken with the big architecture and weddings you know these pageantry yeah. affairs i always thought I ain't got that here. I'm in a mining community or we have, uh, we have Legion halls with, uh, you know, uh, the, our base, the, 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 the wood panel walls, like in Wayne's world. And it's just, mm, that's, sure. I think I mm. stuffed animals on the, <laughs> <laughs> that's our reality here and, uh, totally different than the stuff. And that's a good point. So it forces you to, uh, look at things differently and mm -hmm. find and create uh, with what you got. I, I, I think that's where that. wedding photography comes in. And I think it made me a better photographer being a wedding photographer for a while because it makes mm -hmm. you learn on your feet because nothing's ever going to go as planned when you're shooting a wedding. You have one day to shoot mm -hmm. it. You can't redo it. And right. Mother Nature is not going to play nice with you. It's going to rain. It's going to get windy. And you had to learn to think on your feet. So I think it made me mm -hmm. a better photographer. Even though I don't enjoy doing them now, I'm glad I did them. Yeah. Sure. Yep, same here. So what's your goals then? Where are you going now with uh, whatever uh, passions or projects or things that you're creating in order to, I, I believe you said you wanted to, uh, you want to get out there and teach more. I mean, I think you might still be able to speak at one of those events, PPA or what have you. I can't see why they wouldn't all have somebody like you. No, I mean, when, I had, when, I had, when I had Al Gilbert up here, he was 78 years old and he was as young and spry as uh, mm -hmm any of us <laughs> wow he was like a master yeah. it was so cool to watch him just take complete control it was amazing yeah do you have uh, yeah uh, i would say i'm going in three different uh three different emphasis or three different directions uh i still want to do what i want to do so there are some photo sessions that uh i might pursue either for teaching reasons uh, to fill mm. gaps in the programs that i have or to uh, just because it looks like a fun job to do. Um, that's one thing. Um, teaching seminars, yes, that's something I, I would still love to do. Uh, I do have program materials that I've been putting together, I've been putting together for years, uh, some of these programs. And uh, I still mm -hmm. spend you know, five, six hours a day on, on just one little segment of a little program. So I still devote a lot of, uh, of, to that. Uh, those are mm -hmm. available on the website. And then the other one is uh, light painting, uh, headshots, uh, that sort of thing. But light painting is the really the one that I would really like to get better at because, or, or I should say, get more proficient or just do more of. Um, because that, as John probably mentioned, is difficult and yet extremely rewarding because you feel like a photographer again. After all these uh -huh. years, back in the days of shooting slides and that sort of thing, that was fun and the excitement was there. But, you know, that kind of wanes after a while. But now yeah. with light painting, you're, it's like, wow, you're you're lighting and creating and doing all this magic stuff that that eventually produces this gorgeous image. And so, um, so as it is with John, and, and he's, again, mentioned it, 
that uh, uh, it, he, he's invigorated again to do this. So it's um, yeah. difficult, very rewarding. Yeah, rewarding is pretty important. Yeah, it's good to be uh, it's good to be creatively inspired and to keep going at it. So um, I can see that the website is up there, and that's an example of a, a, a before and after. There we go. Uh, yeah. Is that your? There we go. It's yours. Yeah. yeah, that's his light painting. Beautiful. So this was learned and uh, initially taught to you by John Hartman, right? Which is like right, light right, right. Yeah, and each of those is at least fifty different exposures. Each separate item is lit separately. Uh, mm -hmm. Like the uh, chrome piece that goes above the windshield, I probably did two or three different exposures just on that. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, the highlights that run along the vehicle, that should be done in one exposure, but sometimes it I, it can't be done or I don't do it as well. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, those, that's, that Chevy, there's about, I'm just guessing, at about 70 different exposures. That's amazing. Even the red taillights there shining on the bush. Yeah, I, I I added that because there's a there's a Facebook group that uh, features a lot of that, but to an extreme amount. I mean, it just way overdone. But okay. the point is, uh, it's it's a it's it's good something good to add. It's just another little touch uh, mm -hmm. that's worthwhile doing if done correctly. This uh -huh. is a friend of mine's car uh, who uh, it's a Tesla, so I thought it would be appropriate to photograph it near uh -huh. a solar. Neat. Now, just so everybody knows, the basics of a light painting image, you're doing these, it's completely dark out, right? Because each exposure is, what, yeah. 20 seconds or so? Uh, 10 seconds at the most. I, well, okay. sometimes it's 30 seconds if I'm lighting. Uh, like in, in that photograph there with the, the Camaro on the mm -hmm. right, that row of trees, I had to walk back that whole way and then light that all those trees with the, the light on a high pole. Um, okay. John uses uh, a drone to do that these days. But anyway, so I had to go back to do So that was like a 30 second exposure. That's beautiful. <laughs> is there a market for these? As far as I know, John has uh, made some pretty decent sales selling yeah. to a particular high well, end. Yeah, this is the other guy's, uh, the, that guy's other Camaro. Um, and this is, I think this one was done better than the first one. But um, but John certainly knows, a, knows how to find a market. And I've been struggling with that. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, but just a few nights ago, I, I visited a fellow who's got a huge stable of cars. So I'm looking forward to uh, this being a, a great relationship. And that's the key with light painting. You have to find someone that um, mm -hmm. that it's, will value what you're doing. Because sometimes when um, they remodel their their car, or, I mean, what are they not remodel? They whatever they do to it, <laughs> uh, yeah. they, they spend so much money on it that to spend another thousand or so on a photograph, it's like, mm -hmm. nah, I can't afford that. So you have to find somebody who uh, not only values it, but has the ability to, to invest that. That's not a lot yeah. of money, but again, to, to some of these people, it's not, not worth it. Yeah. Interesting. Well, there's a lot of money out there. A lot of people with a lot of money. You want to find the ones who are, you know, multi, multi, multi billion uh, millionaires. Oh, maybe a billionaire. Just billionaire. real briefly, I'd like to mention on the the, the truck that you showed that semi, uh, mm -hmm. and then the next one that was uh, those are more what we what I call a flash painting. In that I used flash, not a continuous light, and that was okay. because this was at the end of a senior session. This is his dad's truck, so uh, right. so I used flash to light it up. I didn't want to wait as long yeah. as it would have taken for it to be completely dark. The mosquitoes were already eating me up, so I didn't want to wait around anymore. Um, so flash, you can do more when it's just dusk rather than completely dark. Uh, it's yeah. not as good as light painting with continuous light, uh, but uh, but it can be done that way. Nice. Mm -hmm. And even the ones with the people I know, it's like, I, I guess you do the whole thing first and then you add them in later because you're not going to want to exactly. sit in there for 10, 15 seconds. Exactly. Yeah. The whole session takes, uh, you know, maybe an hour to do. Then we throw the person in at, at the last part and then hit them with mm -hmm. a, a softbox flash. And then you have to mask them in. Mm -hmm. So you're looking forward to doing more and more of these for I do. all the reasons. I do want to. And even little products. I was never interested in commercial photography, but now I'd love to do little, little widgets yeah. if I can light them. Um. You were mentioning you want to maybe do headshots as well. Is that something? 
yeah, that. Uh, yeah, I, I'm doing them right along, and and I enjoyed them because it's they're it's fun. They're fun people and um, mm -hmm. easy to do. Um, I, I, I got to send you the replay for Rafael Wego, who's out of Calgary. He's a Polish dude, and he does stunning, stunning, mm -hmm. stunning headshots. And yeah. he's become okay. uh, quite knowledgeable. Mostly uh, on location, too. Just two yeah. lights and a reflector. Okay. He's all okay. on location. Yeah. Two lights and a reflector, and that's it. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you'll enjoy it. But um, for that kind of thing, uh, well done once, uh, once it's established, it seems to me. Uh, well, you're dealing with an older crowd, professionals, and they've got money. So it's not like you're dealing with seniors or brides where you have all those emotions and fantasy going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And they want something good. So, um, and I think it would tie in really, really well with where you're going. So you were doing, uh, I know pre-pandemic, you had mentioned something about uh, coming up here and doing a, a workshop. And uh, it was always something I always wanted to do. If I, if I can ever pull it together, it's something I definitely would do. Are you hoping to do more of those as well as you've got these express uh, uh, or you call them drive-through seminars or something like that? Right. I, drive drive I thought of calling it a drive-by, but I, I, that didn't sound too good. But, uh, so, uh, yeah, if we're on our way somewhere, um, then I offer a, a much lower cost seminar uh, to uh -huh. just stop and do a, a – any kind of a seminar, whether it be a lecture type or a live shoot. Cool. And, and anyone can find that on your website. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm looking at some images here and uh, I thought it would be uh, really cool to just show everybody what we're talking about. Okay. I'm going to show you this one here okay. and uh, boom, boom, boom. Show my screen. Share. There we go. Boom. Not that one. Not that one. Here. There we go. No, no, it's not the one. <laughs> it's this one right here. So I, I find this interesting. And I want to point out a couple obvious things. It's really nicely composed, but the lighting is damn near perfect. You've got really a, a, an exquisite uh, main light shadow uh, sort of combination. You've got... Uh, uh, a nice balance, so the the shadow's not too dark, not too not too light. That's still something I still struggle with to these days, to this day, you know. So I always admire a well crafted, uh, uh, both an exposure white balance and pose wise. But when I look at an image like I this, a, I have a really pardon? smart camera. I, I I put it on TTL and I mm -hmm. push the button. That's yeah. I think you had mentioned that to me before, and I I was hoping you'd say that. So you're letting the technology do the work for you. You're you're yeah. you're you're using the, the Canon uh, on the small softbox, and you just let it do the work. But aren't you setting the shutter speed? And does that really? No, um, I'm setting the f-stop at usually about f4. Of course, mm -hmm. that varies, but that's like my default or go-to setting. I start off at f4, change it if I need to, but uh, that's generally the the look I like, whether it's a long lens or short lens. Uh, but mm -hmm. no, I let the shutter speed float. Uh, it's on a tripod, so I don't really don't much care what it is. Uh, I'll change it. Not, not like a situation like this. I would definitely have to control the shutter speed so that the window in the background is yeah. gives us the right rendering. But uh, but most of the time, out on location, um, I just let it do its thing. Cool. It's like uh, Joe Busink. I remember seeing. He said he put his camera on P all the time because he said P stood for professional. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you could do that, but then it would end up changing your f-stop too. So, yeah. so I, no. I I prefer a for amateur. Yeah. <laughs> so you're choosing the aperture. You got the flash on TTL. You're letting the camera flash do the work for you and yeah. uh, computate all that stuff. And you uh, you really? are uh, you know, back in, it, yeah back in the, back in the film days. Then we did have to do all that. We had to meter everything with an incident meter and set the camera manually. But mm -hmm. really, I mean. Cameras are so darn uh, um, proficient these days. At least the mm -hmm. ones I'm using um, are. Uh, I use the Canon flash system, so that's they're always really, really close, if not dead on, to what I like. So mm -hmm. I just let it let it do the work for me. Have yes. you gone mirrorless? Uh, I do. I have an R5 now. Yes. 
and they're handy. The, the focus is because struggling with the focus point was always a, a pain in the rear. So uh, letting mm-hmm. the RF do that for me now, as as Sony users uh, know, uh, is yeah. so much more freeing than uh, than having to do it ourselves. Yeah, we keep hearing that uh, people with the Canon and well, myself being a Sony user, I can agree. And uh, it's it's almost like it's almost like you're cheating, you know. I sometimes will do a shoot and I'm like, did I focus? I, I forgot because it, it's not something. I just let the camera do all the work and I download, check yeah. it out. Sharp, sharp, always sharp. Yeah. Uh, makes our there jobs is easier. In that, though, uh, sometimes I can get so reliant on the camera that I forget that. The shutters may, may have been too uh, mm-hmm. too long, and I get some some blur from uh, okay. movement. Uh, so we do have to pay attention to it just to make mm-hmm. sure that uh, it's still within the range that we want. But but yeah, yeah. I just I, I like to equate it to uh, Granny uh, Clampett. You know, she used to uh, put wood in her electric stove. You know, <laughs> use the use the technology for crying out loud. That's why we paid all that time. <laughs> Uh, that's going way back. What was, it, what was the name of that show again? The Beverly uh, Hillbillies. Yeah, Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah. For you Some younger people watching this show now, are like, who are they? What's that show? <laughs> I really, yeah. So, so I like this image. I like, and I see this consistently in your work, not only on the technical side, which we were just talking about. So I just wanted to touch on this to give everybody a sense of where I'm going with all this. But the composition is there. You've got the right. You've obviously chosen that dress to go with that chair. It's right. well coordinated. Um, the flowers are surrounding her in a sense that it's uh, framing her, so to speak. And you made all this come together. This wasn't just haphazard. This was all done with purpose. Um, and it's funny. And maybe you can give us a tip, or especially for the younger photographers who are sort of like starting out and need to know this stuff but i find i got to tell myself rob just slow down take a deep breath and just stop and stop and look at the image it's hard to do especially when you got a family and people are getting a little cranky but but it's something i'm getting better at as i get older but is that a thing with you as far as can you put it into words in any way shape or form as far as just stop and look yeah um I'm going to sh- shock a few people, but uh, back in the 1980s, when I worked worked for Motorola, I'd go around to all these places, and they'd have these Playboys out <laughs> on the <laughs> on the tables. And so, okay, I'm going to check this out. And and one thing I noticed, besides the beautiful women, was the composition. And yeah. that's one thing that was really strong about uh, those those Playboy images that they were composed perfectly. So yeah. I got that sense of composition from from those i mean we yeah. get inspiration from all different uh, areas but that's yeah. really i think what what gave me the idea to compose with with balance and symmetry and um and also a dynamic uh, look uh, a tilt whatever but um so you have to find um yeah find that balance yeah you know. That's a really good point, even though it's... I haven't uh, seen a Playboy since 1986, I want you to know. <laughs> no, no, me neither. I, I, you know, they don't interest me anymore. <laughs> but it's, well, it's a, no, really, Playboy photography, uh, I couldn't imagine was or is at any higher level. No. It's always done to perfection. Yeah. So quick, weird question here. Would they complain that her feet are cut off? Would that be an issue? Uh, not in this one. If I cut them off at the ankles, they might. Okay. Um, you know, it, it all depends. It, and I learned a lot from PPA too, all the seminars and uh, uh, all the competitions. Competition is huge for learning uh, how to compose. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, so I learned that you don't cut off at a joint. Uh, so mm-hmm. uh, so I never do. Uh, okay. Not on purpose. But no, I, uh, uh, this one, Doc, uh, there used to be something going around many years ago about cutting the top of the head off. And I, I never had a problem with that. And that's because mm-hmm. it, if it's done well, they won't see it. If you do mm-hmm. it uh, out of balance, uh, then, yeah, then they might complain. But no, we really never had any problem with that. If it's done well, they won't see it. However, some people get nitpicky and they stop and overanalyze you from tree okay, points yeah. like that. Sure, you some know, people might have. My, that mm-hmm. might bother a few people, but uh, you can just say, well, I cut the rest of their body off too. So. 
All right, let's, uh, I want to go back to this image here down below this girl here. I think it's the same girl, different dress. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just want to point out the difference. And this is something you do quite a bit. You really show uh, everybody how you kind of pull together and these subtle differences. And I know in your Facebook group, you're often showing images like this of this nature where you're, you're, you're showing the visual difference between certain techniques and uh, we got a good example here. Uh, somebody might think on the one on the left, if you didn't even see the one on the right, somebody might think it's perfect. I love it. But then you look at the one on the right and there's that fuzzy effect for lack of a better word. Uh, Playboy inspired fuzzy effect. And uh, can you see it, John? Can you see it right in there? Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's the same lighting, really. It's the same lighting, isn't it? But it's what, the same main light, but I dropped that scrim in place to, to, do, to broaden the light. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's all you've done. So is that so, light actually shooting through that scrim? Right, right. Um, or is it, I, I don't uh, have the softbox, I'm still using it, but. Uh, uh, but I furthered because when I set up my softbox, for some reason, my light stand wouldn't go as low as I wanted it to go. So mm -hmm. um, I thought, well, to to rather than physically lowering the light, I'd lower the light uh, optically uh, by, yeah. if that's the right word, by dropping a scrim in its path, and then the uh, the light yeah. just gets diffused over that whole scrim lower. Mm. So you're cheating. But you can just see how much yep, softer it is. It's beautiful. <laughs> You're cheating, but in a sense, it's better than what you originally wanted to do, which was to lower the main light. Mm -hmm. I think it looks. I think it looks really good. So, um, you have um, you have a guide where you show people how you make all these fuzzy flectors, you call them, and what have you. So, um, mm -hmm. I think you still sell them. You know what? I don't know. I do. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll put the uh, link to that in the uh, in the replay, okay. or if, we, if you have it, Johnny, we could. Put it up on the screen or in the no i don't yeah, I, I don't have that link i, I was looking for that yeah, link i can't find it. The, the fuzzy logic book uh it's in there it's like 17 pages of instructions on how to build it it's a pretty mm -hmm. simple website but, uh, all the to to sometimes something that it, it, the details are important so you can build mm -hmm. it with a in a very basic version and that can work but sometimes it just gets in the way if it's if it's not doing what you want it to do so so I have a lot of details on how to refine it and to make it more useful, versatile. Yeah. So I do have uh, the scrim, and I also have a reflector there, too, to fill in the contrast. You see that right here. It's kind of thin. Yeah. So if I remember correctly from the course that you put on with me that you do, other than your wife helping you out with the makeup and hair, you're on these shoots all by yourself. Mm -hmm. And you seem yeah. to you seem to work relatively fast, all things considered. You, you, yeah. You, you, well, my sessions were rather long. Uh, some were four to six hours long, and some people just can't breathe after that. But uh, it just the time sped by. It was just it just flew by. Um, mm -hmm. Before you know it, it's dark, and we have to finish up. So mm -hmm. I just love it. It just never bothered me. Never bothered the seniors either, because people say, "Well, don't they get tired?" Well, do you get tired? sitting around your home you know and then that's what they do they're just working around their home they're they're changing clothes but they're not really doing anything tiring so um yeah. you know i'm doing all the running yeah that's cool uh they're having to go. so here's a good example i just want to show everybody here with this your classic i was talking about this subtractive lighting you've got the blocker over top of the uh girl right, right. and uh you're using the reflector over to the left here two reflectors actually and yeah, in this particular shot there's there's no flash on this one. This is all uh, natural light reflected. Uh, I believe right. so. I uh, I can't remember all of them, but I, but I don't see a softbox there, so that probably yeah. was it. Yeah. So you're using a. Uh, I believe you're shooting a lot of these at 200. We'll get a little bit technical before we let you go because we've got like 10 more minutes to go. Oh, uh, wow. Are you? Did you buy a new lens with your new camera system with the uh, with the uh, mirrorless? And are you using the mirrorless? I have system? not yet. Um, maybe eventually I will, but uh, right now I'm still sticking with the the seventy to two hundred and the twenty four to seventy. The the ones uh -huh. I used are the EF lenses. I think that's the name of it. Um, so I'm still using those. Although you know, maybe someday I'll I'll upgrade. But before I do that, I want to make sure that uh, I want to have two bodies of the same type. And right now I still have a a five D four. Right. So I 
Yeah. Yeah. And well, the mm-hmm. other than the, other than the focusing ease of focus with the new system, um, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And there could be an argument that would be said to uh, to that that uh, if it's working, it's working. Uh, depends how far you want to go with this at uh, this point in your journey. So interesting. Right. So um, yeah, okay. I won't get into other anything than, else. By the way, other than mirrorless, what's what's really, uh, I mean, other than the, the eye focus, what's really helpful is not having a mirror because for every exposure, I would flip up the mirror, and mm-hmm. uh, that would that became a pain. Yeah, uh, I flip up the mirror, then and then sh- press the shutter release on the electronic shutter release. Yeah, so. Um, uh, mirrorless, you don't have to do that. So it's everything is so much easier with a mirrorless camera. Well, you got enough Except reasons now to bail on the old system and go 100%. All new lenses, all new cameras. <laughs> all well, mirrorless. I'm waiting for yeah, Canada to have a, a, an electronic shutter that goes 30 seconds uh, because okay. for light painting, I need that. And right, uh, right now, it would only go to, I think, a half second. Sony right. goes to 30 seconds. I don't know why Canon doesn't allow me to do that, but I'm waiting right. for that. And then I will sell the uh, the 5D4 and uh, okay. get one. Interesting. They only they don't go to anything beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, obviously Sony's better than Canon. Who they know what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, and by the um, way, we we you know Nikon systems can work just fine too. I you know I, I don't mm-hmm. think it's brand specific. Uh, light is light. Yeah, light is light. Yeah, no, it's uh, the subtle differences between the uh, the the different applications that we that you've already mentioned, the focus and the, the mirrorless thing, the mirror. Now, just for the benefit of those watching who are like, why would you put the mirror up? Can you explain that? I know the answers to that, but I just would like okay. your sure, sure. Back in the days when we had medium format cameras, mirrors were uh, huge, and they, they would mm-hmm. call it mirror flap or a flop or slap. Uh, it would shake the camera, uh, so you get a lot of vibration. So you had to flip up the mirror, then uh, then trip the shutter release, in the, usually in the lens. Um, well, that still exists to a lesser degree, but especially in shutter speeds from maybe a, an eighth of a second to a hundredth of a second, there'll be some camera shake from the mm-hmm. mirror. And it, it it may not be obvious until you start zooming into the eyes. And for yeah. years, I was struggling with len- with sharpness that I thought was a lens problem. Well, it turns out it was a vibration from the mirror. So mm-hmm. ever since then, I've been, I would flip up the mirror to take the picture, unless I'm shooting flash or it's a, a kid or an animal or, or an action sport. Um, but uh, for a portrait, when the camera's on a tripod, I would always flip up the mirror first to avoid that shake. Yeah, and, and you wouldn't think it's an issue, but it is. I've seen you post pictures yeah. Yeah, in your Facebook group, where zooming in really close, it's a it's it's an obvious thing. So I think I used to think a tripod was your greatest tool. Then I went through like 15 years of hating tripods because you know <laughs> I'm freestyle handheld. Yeah. And then about uh, 12 years ago or so, maybe more, I said no, back to the tripod. I think the tripod yeah. combined with the mirror thing is uh, sure. one of your most important. I love tools. the There's tripod. A place I hate yesterday I did. Camera. I'm sorry, what? No, I yeah. said I like the tripod because yeah. I hate being behind the camera. I think it's so okay. impersonal, especially when you're doing a headshot. Okay. You want to get the best expressions. Mm-hmm. If I'm tucked behind a camera, it's okay. so impersonal. But if you can have it all set and then just get up and just start talking to them and just have a yeah, I find I get better pictures that way. Great, great. Do you feel the same way, Fuzzy? Uh, I don't work that way, but I, I can appreciate that. Yeah. Well, how do you work then? Similar situation. Uh, I, I I work behind the lens, <laughs> okay, so, you do, I, okay. so I'm used to shooting. But uh, but I I can certainly appreciate what John's saying that, that there's yeah. definitely a benefit to that. Well, yeah, no, it works and it works for you, and that's all that matters. So exactly, yeah. John's John's sometimes, a bit of a stickler too. Yeah. Well, uh, sometimes, especially I'm finding with with uh, adults, they do have tr- trouble. Uh, posing for a camera. Kids and seniors, never. But adults, they're a little bit more self-conscious or aware of the camera. So it would mm-hmm. be better to, to just carry on that conversation, as John said, uh, with them. Uh, but yeah. it's just not something I, I have it I've gotten into. And in the studio, I don't use a camera stand or a tripod. So uh, I'll just yeah. stick what I'm doing with what I'm doing. But I, 
there's no doubt that 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 can be better. Yeah, interesting. Uh, to that point, I just want to make a comment and uh, observation on that. So uh, here's what I'm thinking immediately when you say that you've got your head and your eyeball glued to the, and they're not getting the benefit of seeing you uh, looking at them and interacting in that way, which is kind of a valid point, but it works for you. And I'm going to guess that one of the reasons, besides the fact that you're dealing with a younger crowd, that they have uh, a lot of uh, anticipation, faith, and confidence in you as an artist because they, your brand is well known. They know they're going to achieve something. They're excited. They're, ex and this applies too with the six-hour shoot. And I, I'm going to guess. I could be wrong. They're like, I'm getting this experience, and I know what the end result's going to be because Fuzzy's been doing these for 20, 30 plus years or more. Uh, maybe he photographed the older siblings three, four years ago, and they saw the results. And their parents. <laughs> and their parents. And, and, but, you know, my point being, there's an anticipation there in their mind. Uh, it's psychological. They know where you're going with this. So you practically, you could show up with a pink tutu and green hair uh, at, at a, as a wig or whatever, and they, they wouldn't care. They would just say, oh, he's weird. He's a photographer. He's a creative artist. Yeah. I know what I'm expecting here, and, I'm, and, and that's the thing that matters the most. Is that... You think that sort of not that it really matters, but you that know, analysis. Yeah, I think I'll, I'm, I'm very specific on my instructions too on what to do, how to smile, okay. how to pose. Um, so I think that that's helpful. I just want to share mm -hmm. a real brief story about that, though. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that the way I do it is the best. Um, it no doubt isn't. Uh, but um, the Darton Drake, if you ever knew him, he was a great, talented artist. And he yeah. once uh, said, you know, Fuzzy, you have a, a similar look to some of your seniors that I get. And I like to get this moody kind of down kind of feeling to it, uh, not depressed, but just somber and thoughtful. And Sultry. so what I do is I, Dart was saying, well, I kind of weave this story. I say, just imagine that your boyfriend just left <laughs> you for the, your, your best friend. And, and now you're like... <laughs> Then he would snap the shutter. And he said, Fuzzy, who, how do you do it? I said, I just tell him to look down. <laughs> so, uh, that's funny. <laughs> so uh, I'm more technical it, about it, which is definitely yeah. not the best way. In fact, that's, a, right. that's a drawback I've always had, that I, yeah. I, I don't feel like communicate well with uh, them as people. Yeah. They're almost just mannequins to me, which is not good. Yeah, no. But it's what I've been doing and I, it's just yeah. at my age, it's just too darn hard to change. Not that I don't want to or, no. or wish we could, but yeah, yeah, it works. No, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> it's very valid. It works. And, <laughs> I just have them look down. You don't need to complicate things. <laughs> so, okay. We're almost done. I'm going to ask you one last question because it's, uh, it's going on an hour and I really appreciate you coming here and, uh, and it was, uh, it was very insightful. So, um, and we'll put the links to uh, Fuzzy's uh, educational information in the replay down below. And uh, you can check that out. Highly encourage you to. But uh, just really simple. What's your favorite movie? Mm, wow. Uh, geez. <laughs> Is your wife there? She knows. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say because... I don't really know if I have a favorite. Uh, maybe uh, it's a wonderful life. Uh, All right. You know, the scenes where they're, you know, where they're appreciated for what they've done, you know, maybe mm -hmm. that gets to the end. Yeah. All right. You're a romantic at heart. Deep down below, <laughs> there, there, there is a pool of romanticism. <laughs> it's there <laughs> at the very foundation. Yeah. So, yeah, Sean, uh, Sean, John, do you have any um, closing questions? We're going to let you go now. I really appreciate it again you uh, joining. No, me. I've been just soaking up everything he's had to say because I know there's a lot I learned from him already just by listening mm -hmm. to him. So, what would you tell your 22 year 22 year old self? I always like asking that question, and I, I won't ask any more. Yeah. Done. Well, at that time, I was still in electronics, uh, but uh, uh, I would have said, "Yeah, get into photography," but also learn marketing <laughs> because I never did. I always relied on word of mouth and that worked great for mm -hmm. a while. 
And then it's like the pig who, you know, builds his house out of straw and, mm -hmm. you know, instead of who did it with bricks. So really you got to learn how to, to sell your work. Um, and uh, I've been getting by with what I do, but not the last few years the way I would have liked to. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, really the best way is to, to learn how to, how to promote back in the nineties. It was easy. You just put an ad in the paper uh, yeah. or, or go to a wedding uh, uh, um, bridal show or something. That's mm -hmm. all you had to do these days. It's not so easy. So I would have to, I would say, learn how to do that. these yeah. days. Marketing. Interesting. Well, you can always teach an old dog, new tricks and uh, you seem like you're pretty teachable. So I'll wish you well on that. So, all right. Thanks, thanks guys. We're out of here. We'll let Fuzzy go and uh, look forward to next week. We've got Judy, hopefully Judy Cormier coming on next week. Ooh, again. We'll let her, we'll let, yeah. Repeat, but uh, we'll let y'all know. Thanks for having uh, me. Thanks, no, thanks for coming. Really appreciate it. All right.